Have you ever wondered how you can enhance your video presentation and make it look a lot better with your branding and everything else? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to do that with OBS Studio. It's very beginner friendly, so with that being said, we're going to just walk you through some of the processes that will help you get from A to Z in the whole process. But this is the very, very first lesson on how to get OBS. So we're going to show you how to download, we're going to show you how to set up a scene, we're going to show you how to do the sources and the transitions. So with that being said, let's just get right to it. Let's go. Go to the OBS project site and download OBS for your machine. It'll look something like this when you first download it, but we're going to fix all that. So in the first part of this UI, you want to look at the scenes, right? So right here you have scene one. This is your first scene. This is where it contains all of your elements that will create a scene. So we're going to rena rename this real quick just to make it more, you know, more user friendly so we can understand what's going on here. So I'm going to name this intro scene here. Okay, boom. Just like that. Now to create another scene, just hit this plus button. And you'll see, you can create another scene. Let's go ahead and name this holding scene. Main thing I'm trying to do right now is just show you how you can have one scene and another scene. So having two scenes and how they transition. Oops, it looks like I forgot to take out my uh, transition here. So I'm gonna just remove that real quick. But I will show you how to do that later, how to add those custom transitions, so stay tuned. So with that being said, we have a intro scene and we have a hold scene right here. So we're gonna add some elements to this scene. Go ahead and hit the add button under the uh, sources and you can see we're gonna add a media source. And a media source essentially is a, is a, in a format of a video. Usually it can be, um, mo most time it's a video. So just find your video source that you would like to uh, add to your scene and then you're gonna go ahead and check the use hardware decoding if available. You don't have to do that, um, but it does help with the performance of your machine. And go ahead and hit OK. And you can see that it now has inside of the whole scene that element, but it turned off, it turned off as soon as it was done playing. So what you want to do is go ahead and add loop. I actually animate this scene to be a looping scene, so it can pretty much just as long as it's visible, it's gonna loop. So that's pretty much how you're going to want to set that up as far as your looping uh, scenes for your whole scene, hold scenes. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and do our other two hold scenes. Become a Patreon today and support this community and support this channel. You might be asking, why would I want to do that? Well, one of the reasons is we are creating coding camps and tech camps for kids. And a lot of the Patreon dollars will go towards setting up those coding and tech camps with equipment and all of the things that are necessary to teach younger generations how to do some of the digital media techniques that we teach here at Digital Realm. So with that being said, your Patreon dollars will go towards scholarships for certain members of the Digital Realm community. So with that being said, make sure you get your membership, but at the same time, become a Patreon if you're not really interested in becoming a member just yet. Let's go. All right, so now that you have everything arranged to your liking, you pretty much just want to go ahead and set up, the, uh, set up your new scene. So we're gonna go ahead and go to a new scene, we're going to rename the one, um, we're going to put the whole scene on top, just to kind of give it some type of order. However your mind works, that's the best way to do it. And then instead of intro scene, we're going to name this um, something different. We're going to go ahead and name this full scene. Maybe. Eh. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Mm, let's just leave it for now. Full scene. So we're going to just add some elements to this full scene. So the first element we're going to add is, go ahead, we're going to do the um, video capture. So how do you get your video or webcam to show up on your screen? So we're going to go into um, capture device, and then you're going to do camera. You can name it whatever, but I like to do camera one. And you can see this is camera one, and you can pick the device source um, from the drop down. But we're going to hit OK because it's already linked and set up. And pretty much there you have it. You have your camera right there just like that <laughs> have to give it a little shout out right there just because we have a little bit of success and i hope you hopefully this makes you happy that you get a little bit bit of success for yourself so with that being said we're going to add another element so we're going to go ahead and hit that plus button and go to images image and in the image we're going to add a frame so we're going to add this frame now the key to having a frame is that you need to file with a transparent 
with transparency uh, added to it. So if you know how to do that, make sure you uh, have a file that has transparency added to it. So usually it's either TIFFs, PNGs, or something of that fashion. So with that being said, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, upload this image, which is our frame. And essentially, everything that's transparent, we can see past, which is gonna be the layer under, which is our video feed, and then everything that's not transparent is gonna show up as a frame. As you see, I move it here, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and lock it in, just so we don't do that again. And you can see with the little uh, eye there, you can toggle off the visibility as I just did. All right, so that's pretty much that. So we're going to, hmm, what should we do next? I'm trying to think, let me think, let me think. Um, I'm thinking, let's go ahead and add a new scene. Yeah, let's go ahead and add a new scene. Mm, yeah, I think so. All right, new scene. So we're gonna do a picture in picture here. So this scene is gonna be uh, essentially what you're gonna use for if you're doing a presentation or something like that. So, a camera frame, uh, nah, let's just do PIP. PIP scene, or PIP camera, that's fine. PIP camera. So we're gonna add element by hitting a plus sign just like the other one. And you're starting to see the trend here. So hit the plus sign, we're gonna add the elements and that media source that we created from before is gonna be already populated. So we don't have to really create a new video capture device because we already have one. So hit, hit add existing and then select the one that you already set up. So that was camera one. And if you see these little red boxes on the corners, you can click, hold and drag to make it small, make that scene smaller or that object smaller. Um, or that's if you want to call it a source, but that source smaller so you can scale things up just like that Right, so we're gonna and you can move them around the scene. So we're gonna add another um, Another image that has a PNG and it's gonna be our PIP picture-in-picture -picture frame So basically it's gonna frame our you know our smaller Smaller video feed. So I'm just gonna go find, find this file Drop it in there boom, and it's pretty much set in place and see I, I built it at 1920 by 1080 but you can build it at, you know at full frame and then scale it down as we did the actual uh, footage but what we're gonna do is just go ahead and drag that footage now I can't drag the footage because the cameras under it as you probably noticed that's why a layer the, the way you have your layers organized is very important so we're gonna put that camera layer over the top of the frame layer and now we can just place it to the best of our ability, pretty much by eye, doing our best to try to get every pixel covered on the top and the bottom here. And if you need to refine it, you can simply use the, um, if you need to refine the placement, you can simply use the arrow keys and you know hit up, down, left, right, and it'll kind of nudge in each direction until you find something that you really like, just like this, boom. All right, so now that we have that in place, this is just a PIP camera scene, um, but I'm gonna show you next how to put this scene inside of another scene. So we're gonna create another scene and we're gonna call this the presentation scene. And the presentation scene is gonna consist of that PIP camera plus the desktop or whatever you wanna present as the presentation, as the main focus. As we have the full camera there, we're gonna have a presentation as the main focus. So so we're gonna go ahead and add a source and we're gonna add a, the PIP scene from before. And then we're gonna add the image so we can add the frame. So go ahead and add existing and hit frame and hit okay. And now you can see you have the source for the PIP camera that we set up that scene. And then you have the source for the image frame that we set up in that scene. Now we are going to go ahead and do the uh, display capture here. So we'll go ahead and hit the plus sign, hit display capture. We haven't created one of these yet. This is the first one. So we're going to do, go ahead and name this. We're going to name this uh, desktop 01, right? All right, now that we have a name desktop 01, let's just rearrange this so everything, it falls under everything. And then we're going to transform and hit fit to screen. 
and you get to transform by right clicking. So you can hit right click on the actual object inside the viewer and it hit transform. But we're gonna go ahead and toggle it off just so we can continue to record without uh, the machine crashing. So whew, a little bit, a little bit of work, a lot of work, but well worth it. So we're gonna go ahead and just toggle through the scenes and now you see it has the default transition. So I think this is a great point to actually show you how to do those custom transitions that you kind of saw in the beginning. So with that being said, let's just go over here to scene transition and go ahead and click the drop down and you can see all these different types of transitions that you can add. We're gonna go ahead and hit this one for slide just so you can get a sample of what that looks like. Oh, it doesn't look like it showed. Let's try it again. Let's swipe, add, swipe. Click that, you can name it. All right, perfect. So then you can see, you can swipe in, swipe, or not swipe in. Um, but in order to see, you just hit preview transition and you can see what it would possibly look like. But we're gonna cancel that out. I just want to show you what it kind of looks like. Let's do one more, like fade to color. Right, let's preview this transition real quick. Fade the color just like that. So you can preview these before. So, but we're not gonna do these. We're gonna do custom transitions and how you add a custom transition is to add Stinger, right? So we're gonna go ahead and name your first transition. And I'm gonna name this transition. I know it's not too creative, but it is what it is. So we're gonna name this transition, hit okay. Now with this, you're gonna go ahead and have to find your video file. The one thing that's that's key to the transition is that your video file also has to have transparency. So you have to be able to render a video file or have access to a video file that actually actually has transparency embedded into it as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and change the time from uh, milliseconds to frames, just because I feel I know the frames better and I can time it better, and I'm gonna do a preview. And if you notice, when we did the when we do the preview that it it transitions too quickly so i don't want the transition from blue to green before the actual screen is full as you see there so we're going to time that out so we need to go back up to the top and we have it at 15 frames we're going to do it the 30 frames here preview it again now it goes blue full frame green and back and forth so that's perfect we're going to go ahead and hit okay boom and now you see it transition from one, transitions from one scene to another scene in the same fashion as the preview. Now I'm gonna give you one more example because I usually have two different types of transitions. So we're gonna do one more. So again, go to add. Well, before we do that, let's clean this up. Uh, it looks like it added some of this stuff that um, I was just showing you how they preview. So we're gonna clean this up. So if you do have a transition on there that you don't want, just go ahead and hit the gear right next to it. So select it, fade to color, hit the gear, remove. Just like that, and you simply remove the transitions. It's, it's nice to keep your, your control sensor tidy so you can work very easily, especially when you're streaming or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and create another transition, a splash transition, and call this splash. Again, not too creative, but we know what it is. Go ahead and browse for our file that actually is the movie file with the transparency embedded into it. It's like I accidentally clicked off of it. And then go back to properties. If you do accidentally click, click off of it or you wanna go back in to retime it when you, later on, you just hit the properties just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing. Use frame, use, use the frames, use 30 frames. And we're gonna preview that transition. It looks like it's perfect every time. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And let's go ahead and just swipe through all of these different scenes. As you transition, uh, as you select different scenes, you can see the transition transitions to those scenes. Just like that, you set up a custom transition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more, go to digitalrim.com and become a member today. 
with your membership you get access to our course library we have all different types of digital media content creation topics that you can cover and learn for yourself very beginner friendly just like this video so with that being said go to digitalrealm.com and get your membership today and don't forget join our discord community at the link below you get access to a lot of topics and discussions about these videos just like this from members of the creator camp so with that being said hopefully i'll see you in the discord community in the link below let's go